And welcome to the Character Vault, a series where I go through various RPG products and basically go through how to create a character within each of those uh, different tabletop RPGs. And so I thought it would be simple to kind of kick this series off with one of the most basic character creations, or probably the most popular, and that would be Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. And so I've already started a little game here in Roll20, although there are many different ways to actually create a character for Dungeons & Dragons. Um, I'm going to use Roll20 uh, because it actually simplifies things a little bit. You could also do something like D&D Beyond if you've purchased any of the books from that site. Although I do believe you can also get a free account with them and it just has the basic rule set. So you're kind of limited to that, but still, um, you can see I have uh, five characters. So in Rule 20, once you open up your game, uh, you'll want to make a folder for characters if you don't already have that. That way you can just have everything organized and ready to go. And you can already see I've already got one guy there and I'm actually going to go ahead and archive him. Uh, if you want it to be permanent, you could delete it, but archiving means I can go back and then restore it whenever I want to. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and archive him, and I'm going to right-click on characters and add character uh, to this specific folder. If I wanted to add something that wasn't in the folder, I would just go to add and then character handout or folder. So here we have Ibosoke. Sorry, I can never really pronounce these Roll20 names, so we're going to edit that. And we're actually going to name him Monterey. And there's a theme that goes with all of my uh, characters for 5th edition, at least uh, for basic 5th edition. So my halflings, I, I pretty much play exclusively halflings. And all of my halflings are related. They are brothers, and they come from the same mother. The youngest one, which is the monk, he was actually uh, lost and raised by wolves. And then uh, elves found him, and he became a monk. So... You can see that I've already just added a picture. Uh, I just dragged and dropped it right there onto it, and I'll go back and make a token of him later. But we're actually going to make a barbarian halfling, and we're going to use the character mancer. Now, if you're a DM who's creating an NPC, you'll obviously want to create an NPC. Um, if you want, if you don't have any of the products in Roll20, so like if you're just using the basic features for the character mancer, you don't have anything like Xanathar's Guide or Tasha's Cauldron or even the Player's Guide, um, you'll want to edit the sheet directly because you could use something like 5e Tools or even you could look up stuff on D&D Beyond to actually get some of those uh, to get some of those features. So we're actually going to use the Character Mancer and it's going to be nice, quick and easy. And you can see that there are some tabs up above that kind of guide you through things. You can always opt out to edit the sheet directly, but we're gonna stick with this for the long run. So the first thing we're going to do is choose a race. And as I've already said, we're gonna choose a halfling. And I'm gonna actually uh, mention this right here that when you are choosing any option for whatever reason, it'll actually have what source it comes from. So I know that I have something like Humblewood in here. So uh, things like HCS, which is the Humblewood character sheet, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so things like the Jorbeen, the Luma, the Mapak. I'm probably not going to want to use in a typical Dungeons and Dragons game, or at least one that's run in like Faerun or something like that. Um, but then again, ask your dungeon master to see what is acceptable and what isn't. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the halfling, which means we also get to choose a sub race. And you can always read about flavor text, basically, and all of their little abilities that they come with, like the halfling gets lucky and brave and halfling nimbleness. We're actually going to go with the stout halfling, which is from the player's handbook. And you can see we get a plus two to dexterity. And my guy is actually going to be chaotic neutral. And you can always see that the subrace does give an ability score increase. So everything here is as it would appear in the actual player's handbook. So you don't really have to be referring to the book for every option. So we're going to choose a class and we're going to choose barbarian because I already had that picked out. But if you have any other sources like Tasha's, it'll also have the... Uh, 
class from that source as well. So the artificer is also included here. Skill proficiencies, I'm going to choose intimidation and I believe perception because I already know that my background is going to give me uh, some things that I would already opt into. And you can see that we get rage and unarmored defense and as well as a sample equipment. So we're gonna go ahead and click next. Ability score method. So for the game that I'm going to be playing solo, it is going to be a standard array. And so the standard array, it basically gives you 8, 10, 12, 13, 14, and 15, and you just allocate those across your attributes or your abilities. So if I click 15 for strength, that means I can't click on 15 for anything else. It'll just switch it to that specific ability. So I'm going to go ahead and do 15, 13, 14, 8, because we're not very smart. Uh, let's see, 10, and then we're going to save our 12 for wisdom. And my dexterity is actually going to get bumped up to, four, to 15, and I actually want to maybe switch that out. I want my constitution to be 15, just to kind of even things out a little bit. So there we go. If you want, you can uh, opt to roll for your stats. If you're a pretty big high roller, you could do that. Just check with your DM to what is appropriate, if you have any rerolls or if you're getting rid of the lowest number or anything like that. And of course, there's always point by. And I think custom is you can just go ahead and allocate numbers to it. If you were editing the sheet directly, you would just go ahead and allocate those numbers to whichever ability. So we have our background. I'm actually going to choose the, let's see, Outlander, because my guy actually um, grew out in the wild a little bit before he came to uh, the company of rogues and whatnot. So our tool proficiency is drum. Our language proficiency, dwarf, because my halfling would have learned a few interesting, flavorful words from dwarves. And the way I would rule that is he's probably not proficient in it, but he does he does know those um, exciting words from the dwarves. And then we get our origin, and I will actually opt out of that. I'm not going to choose one, although you could just click the button to actually roll, and it shows Forrester. I'm actually going to have my own origin that I'll actually type up in the backstory. For the personality personality traits, we get little little blurbs here. Uh, I was driven by a wanderlust that led me away from home. And I, re oh, not that one. I place no stock in wealthy or well-mannered folk. Money and manners won't save you from a hungry owlbear. So there we go. Those are our two personality traits. Ideal, I'm going to save for later because I have something in mind for that. And for bond, I will also go ahead and save that for later. My one flaw, which I'm kind of sad because... There's actually two great ones. Violence is my answer to almost any challenge. So there you go. You have a little hellion of a halfling. Next, what? how would you like to choose your equipment? We're going to go with class equipment, although you could opt in for starting wealth, which gives you a set gold count, and then you would just purchase various equipments and add them to your character sheet. So uh, class equipment, our martial weapon is going to be a great axe. Although you do have a plethora of martial weapons to choose from. If you chose Barbarian, if you chose Simple Weapons, the list would be a little bit different. We're going to choose two Hand Axes right there to kind of complement my uh, Halfling Barbarian Axe Wielder. And we'll click Next. Spells, we don't get spells as a Barbarian, but if you play it as a Sorcerer or a wizard or any other type of a character or class that does get spells this is where you would purchase your or you would uh, place your spells right here and it would list it in uh, level order from the cantrips all the way to the highest level that is available to your class so you just pick that out oftentimes what i'll do is i'll actually go to dnd beyond and I'll actually look up spells here because it does uh, sort things out by actual spell type. Or if I want to, I can uh, rearrange it by uh, the actual class. If you are running a, at least a level 4 character for the first time, you would pick a feat. But since we are level 1 as a halfling, we don't get that such luxury. So next. And then we get to flesh out our biography. And if I remember correctly... 
I chose my age was going to be 23. My height was rather short because we are a halfling. I think it was 3-4. If not, I'll have to check it out later. At 48 pounds, he's a little bulky guy. I could just totally be messing around with this. I I, I don't know how much I weigh when I was 3-4 when I was a little kid. So <laughs> I'm just kind of going through some stuff right there. Uh, let's go for tanned white. He's, that doesn't make any sense, but whatever. Next, we get to review all of the choices that we've made. And it's here that the character Manta will actually tell us, hey, you haven't chosen your origin or your ideal or bond or something isn't quite right. There we go. Once we're all done, we'll just click apply changes and it'll build the character for us. And so we'll have our character sheet right here, ready to go. You can see our stats right there. And I might actually go ahead and change this. Uh, I would like a 15 in dexterity. So that is how to create a character from the Character Mancer on Roll20. As again, there are a lot of different ways to create a character, whether it's with the physical book or whether it's through D&D Beyond. So feel free to leave a comment down below. Give this video a huge thumbs up to support the series and subscribe if you would like to see more. And also check out the new series that I am creating, which will actually feature Monterey in the... What is it? The Path of the Eight Petals or something like that. It's a solo adventure that I'll be running through with my halfling barbarian. So I will see you guys in the next video.